we're going to start on today, normally like we, we do on Sunday, but because of the uh, coronavirus uh, outbreak, uh, we're recording uh, by ourselves, basically, without audience. It's a new thing for me. So we welcome you to, to Dove Church, uh, YouTube and Facebook uh, listeners and viewers, uh, uh, and uh, we just are welcoming you to our, our, our broadcast today. And as normal, we always say a confession, and we want to say it again today. Uh, we say it in front of every uh, service that we do, and here it goes. We have everybody lift their Bibles up or wherever their Bible is recorded on whatever device, and they say, this is my Bible. I am who it says I am. This book calls me an overcomer, and that's who I am. Today I shall be taught the infallible, unchanging word of God. So my mind is alert. My heart is receptive as I gladly receive the word today. I believe that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for all this day calls us to. We thank you for every viewer. We thank you for every listener. We thank you that this word will be taken into our heart. And now, God, let the word of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Let's begin. In past lessons, we've been teaching on grace. While we have heard over many years many different definitions of grace, I happened to be reading one of John Prevere's book, and he supplied a, 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 an expanded grace definition that was not as narrow as the one that we were always taught that was directly related related to salvation only. And so be, be, so when I found it, it expanded what grace was. It gave us great latitude in grace, and, and it covered many areas. And so here is that definition by uh, John Bevere. It is that grace is God's free empowerment that gives us the ability to go beyond our natural ability. It is, it is God's free empowerment that gives us the ability to go beyond our natural ability. And I wanted to say our ability will eventually weaken, but his grace, according to this definition, is strength through our weakness. This grace applies to all areas of your life. The power of grace gives us the ability to reign in this life, to rule and reign in this life. That is a bold statement based on God's word and not on us. The truth about God's grace is founded in this statement. God keeps his word. God keeps his word. And, and, and we must resist the urge to remain in deficit mentality as it relates to God's word. And deficit means that you don't believe that everything God promised and said to us will come to pass or is true. Now, we might say, not say it out loud because that is not socially or religiously correct, but we, 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 we kind of deep down inside, we question some things. A deficit mentality as it relates to the word of God is that it somehow lacks something or that it works for some people and not for all. Well, let me read something from you from, from Romans uh, 5.17 in the TEV version. And it says this, All who receive God's abundant grace and are freely put right with him will rule in life through Christ. All that receive God's abundant grace. And a part of his abundant grace is the word that he has sent to us. That's a part of his grace. 
It empowers us to go beyond our own natural strength into his strength and his ability through his word. How does grace give us power to rule over sickness, disease, or any physical ailment? And I'm mentioning that especially now with COVID-D running rampant because we need to understand that we have a promise from God about ailments, sickness, pestilence, anything of the sort. So, so let's move into the word of God and see what he says about it. And, and, and let's start in Psalm 103 verses 2 and 3. And this is from the Amplified. And the psalmist opens up by saying this. Bless, affectionately, gratefully praise the Lord, O my soul, and forget not one of all his benefit, who forgives every one of all your iniquities, who heals each one of all your diseases. These verses have two great benefits. There are two of them. Number one, he forgives all our sins. Amen. Praise God. He forgives all our sins. Number two, he heals every one of our diseases. He heals every one of our diseases. God cannot lie. He forgives 100% of our sins and he heals 100% of our diseases. The healing is a part of the work of redemption. Redemption is the great buyback done by Jesus Christ. The prophet Isaiah goes on and, and, and additionally adds to what the psalmist has said and, and makes this statement in Isaiah 53, 4 through 5. And this is New King James Version. He says, surely he, meaning Jesus, has borne our grief and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. The Hebrew word for grief in this Isaiah passage is choli. It is defined as disease, grief, or sickness. Jesus came to handle all three, grief, sickness, and disease. He came to handle it then, and he's still handling it today. Grief sickness, and disease. Really, all three are the same. The lie that has come into the church, uh, 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 and, and according to John 10 and 10, it, it, the, the goal of the lie is, 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 is in this verse, and it says, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus said, I have come to give you life, and that more abundantly. And so, so the lie that, 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 that has crept into the church is, is that, that, that God is trying to teach us something in sickness. If that were true, Jesus would not have to deal with our grief or sorrow. And it was promised by Isaiah that he would deal with it. When Jesus came, he did deal with it. He spent his whole ministry Raising the dead, restoring sight to the blind, healing the lame, stopping issues of blood, uh, uh, so on and so forth. He did many of those things in keeping with the promise of the word that this is something that he would do. And even though he left 2,000 years ago, he is still doing it through the church and through believers today. Why would God... Send his son into the world if, if he didn't intend 
to follow through on his promise. It would mean that Jesus would come for no reason. If sickness was something that God was using to teach us. If God was using that to teach us, then he wouldn't send Jesus to undo what he was using to teach us. Think about it. The truth is, God never breaks his promise. And he does not use Jesus to break that promise. God has an insurance policy undergirding his word. It comes from Matthew 24 and 35, King James Version. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. Remember, Jesus came as a finisher, addressing both the sin and disease question. He is a finisher. And on the cross, he said, it is finished. Amen. Many times, people get upset because someone they know who was believing in faith dies. This can cause you to be unsettled in your faith and, and doubt in your head and your heart. The problem is, you do not know for sure what was in that person's heart. They might have verbally shared that they believed for healing and wholeness, but in their heart there was doubt and despair. Well, I've got a word from Romans 3, 3 through 4 from the Amplified, and it's a pretty sharp and a pretty direct word, but it kind of hits to the heart of what we need to understand as it relates to when healing and, and, and wholeness does not happen. What if some did not believe and were without faith, is what that verse says. Does their lack of faith and their faithlessness nullify and make ineffective and void the faithfulness of God and his fidelity to his word? No. They don't get the benefit of it, but it doesn't mean that God fell short on his word. Remember, what you confess with your mouth, you must believe in your heart. They must both line up and agree to make you whole in belief. There is a case or several cases in the Bible, case after case of people who believe with their whole heart and receive their healing. They believe with their whole heart, and they receive it case after case. Jesus shows us and gives us an example. These examples come to help us believe and to know that it's possible because if we can see it in Scripture, we can claim it as by right. It becomes a part of our testimony. We can, we can, we can piggyback off their testimony and say, well, he did it for them, and God is no respecter of persons, and so he will do it for us. And so we claim it as by right that he can do it for us. In Luke 8, 43 and 48, we get the story of the woman with the issue of blood. And, 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 and this woman had bled for 12 years. She faced constant social detachment as she was deemed unclean. She obviously had great wealth at the beginning of the 12 years, but by the end of it, she had spent all of it on physicians and medicine to no avail. But believing in her heart, she came from behind Jesus and touched the hem of his garment. And she came from behind because she was down on the ground crawling because people would have, she was such a social outcast till she, she was supposed to holler unclean because she was unclean because she was bleeding. It was the law. And so she found a way to kind of go unnoticed and, and, and not be detected. So she got down and she crawled to Jesus and touched the hem of his garment. But because she went believing, 
She pulled something from Jesus. And what she pulled from Jesus was virtue. And when she pulled it from me, from Jesus, uh, 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 the Bible says that, that, that Jesus stopped and said, who touched me? And the disciples said, Master, people are all around you. Throngs are pushing against you. But see, her touch was a different touch. It was a touch of believing faith. That came out of 12 years of bleeding, 12 years of hurt, 12 years of social inacceptance or unacceptance. And, 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 and because of that, she, she was on the edge. She was ready to get to have a different outcome. So she did something radical. She broke a few laws. And she said, I'm going to touch something that I believe can help me. And that's what she did. And she touched him, and immediately Jesus knew she touched him. Why? Because virtue left out of him. Healing virtue. She pulled it out with her faith. And you can pull it out with your faith. You can pull it out of it. And so, when he inquired who touched me, the woman said, I did. And then he said, daughter, Meaning I recognize that you are in the family of Abraham, daughter. You have a right to healing, daughter. Children of the Most High, children in the kingdom, children in the family, the believed, the blood ball. You are called daughters and sons. But he addressed this, this woman as daughter. He said, uh, go in peace. And, 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 and be of good cheer. He said, in essence, get happy. Go, get happy. Because your faith, not mine, your faith has made you whole, has healed you. Her mouth and her heart agreed. And you must make your mouth what you say and what you believe in your heart. Believe. Because they agreed her faith action. And again, faith action. Because faith is a verb. It denotes action. Caused her to be healed. Remember, at the beginning of this message, I shared that grace is God's free empowerment that gives us the ability to go beyond our natural ability. The woman's grace operation empowered her to exceed her own ability. It, it, it also prompted her to boldness in action. See, when you have grace, you might be timid in your own strength. But when you have grace and a, 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 a heightened grace, boldness, empowerment, you, 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 get, you go on the edge. You say, I, I, I can do this. I can get out there. If that story did not convince you that God keeps his word, here is another example about blind Bartimaeus. Mark 10, 46 through 48 says, Now they came to Jericho. As he went out of Jericho with his disciples and a great multitude, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the road begging. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Then many warned him to be quiet. But he cried out all the more. Son of David, have mercy on me. See, when you believe, nobody can stop you from crying out. Jesus, have mercy on me. And that's what you need to do today. Quell all the voices. No matter what comes on TV, no matter what's said, no matter how they say it, and they're going to keep on riveting it, they're going to keep on sending it, but you need to cry out, Jesus of Nazareth, have mercy on us. And as we deal with this COVID-19, we need to keep, 
keep, keep crying out, Jesus, have mercy on us. You don't need to see him. You need to cry out. Cry out. Have mercy on us. And, 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 and that was verse 46 to 48. But the interesting thing that happened is, blind Bartimaeus couldn't see Jesus. But Jesus knew where he was. But by the time we get to verse 49, how did I know that he knew where he was? It was something that happened to let Jesus know it was time to react to what he had just heard. Jesus of Nazareth, have mercy on me. Verse 49 says, and Jesus stood still. Jesus stood still. His, this blind man's cry made Jesus stop. Your cry today can still make Jesus stop. And address what you need. And once you get his attention it by faith, tell him what you want. What do you need? Don't go to rambling and say, well, I, I don't know. Tell him what you need. He said, that I would see. And today, you need to say that I would be healed. That I would not be affected. That I would get what I need. That I would stay in wholeness. That my family would be whole. My friends would be made whole. Anybody I know that's affected or infected will be made whole. And that they will not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. That's what we're declaring. And we will not walk in fear. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Amen. This means believing faith calls him to speak out. Believing faith. That's amazing. Then Jesus told him, after he knew specifically what he wanted, go your way. Your faith has made you well. Go your way. Your faith has made you well. And as I come to a close to this, this message and this, this just brief time that we wanted to share with you, I want to end up by saying all the promises of God are yes and in him, amen. Amen meaning it's true. What God says he means. Rest and peace comes when you know that God keeps his word. Dear beloveds, God bless you today. And just before we sign off officially, we want to pray for you. Father, we thank you for everybody that saw this video today that received a word from the Lord today that received a word of encouragement today touch hearts send deliverance and Jesus we want your attention Jesus we want you to stand still and we believe not only with our heart we make confession with our mouth and we line up and we, we release believing faith into our community, our church, and our world. That you would arrest this thing and cause it to stop. And we ask it and we claim it. We claim a peace that passes all understanding. In Jesus' name, amen. Blessings to you all. you to, 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 to give. If you'd like to support this ministry, you can do so through PayPal on our church website, 
DoveChurch.org. DoveChurch.org. Click on the giving link, and that will take you to the PayPal page. Or mail your offering to Dove Church, 4660 Military, 482110, Detroit, Michigan. God bless you until our next broadcast time. We love you.